Hi, this is Sahana. Today we are going to discuss arrays in C Sharp. Let's start with understanding what is an array. Array is a data type that is used to store similar type variables and it's a reference type. Without further delay, let's create console application so that we will have better understanding of arrays. To work with arrays, we should know how to declare it, how to initialize it, and how to store and retrieve the values, also how to manipulate the array, and what are the different types of array. And we are going to discuss all of them in our today's session. Then let's start with declaration. Syntax for array declaration is, first you should write the type, type of the variable that you are going to store. Then you should use, uh, then you should mention the dimension. If it is single dimensional array, then we are going to write pair of square brackets. Then you should write name of the array, then end with semicolon. This is the syntax. I'll remove these default lines of code. Let's say we are declaring integer array, then int is the type. Then we should write the pair of square brackets. Then I'll name it as int array, end with semicolon. This is our int array. If you have to declare a string array, then you should write string, then pair of square brackets, I'll name it as string array, then end with semicolon. This is our string array. Here one thing that you should remember is integer array can store only integer values and string array can store only string values. Here if you look at the code, we have just declared the array. If we just declare the array, compiler will not allocate the memory for this. For that, you should store the values. In technical terms, we call it as initializing the array. Thus, we are going to initialize the array. To initialize the array, I'll say int array is equals to new. Here, we should use the new keyword because if you remember, array is a reference type and here we are going to create the instance of the array and to create the instance of a reference type, we should use the new keyword. Then after new, we should specify the type and here one specifies the size of the array. Here I'll change it to 5. This array can store 5 integer values. The same way I can initialize string array and, and I'll change the size to 4. This string array can store 4 string values. We are done with the initialization. Please remember size of the array cannot be changed once it is declared. It is fixed. We have declared the array and we have created the array specifying the size. Next, we are going to store the values. To store the values inside the array, you should specify the index and array index starts from 0. To store the value inside the int array, I'll say int array then the index. Int array of 0. Uh, please remember this is integer array and we can store only integer values inside this array. I'll say 1. Now, see, we have stored the values. Remember, index starts from 0, not from 1. So, last index always ends with the one lesser number. If the size of the array is 5, then the last index is going to be 4. The first index is going to be 0. This is array indexing. So, now we know how to declare, how to create the array and how to store the values inside the array. There is a good news. To save the time and to make the code more readable and understandable, c -sharp has given a way to combine all these three steps in a single statement. Let's see how to do that. Again, we will take integer array, int array 2, then here new, then int. I'll not specify the size this time. Directly, I'll say 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay, see. This is one way of declaring, creating and storing the values inside the array. If you notice here, we did not specify the size. The compiler will decide the size based on how many values you are storing. So in this case, the size is going to be 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. Remember, at the 0th index, the value 1 will be stored and at the 4th index, 5 will be stored. There is one more way to write this. 
the same way i'll take integer array then this time i'll say int array 3 this time i'm not even using the new keyword i'm directly storing the values compiler will decide everything now we know how to create the array and how to store the values we should know how to retrieve the values right we will see that okay let's say uh, let's say you want to access the last element of the first array that is you want to access 5 one way to do that is i'll simply because this is the console application i'll say console dot write line int array of 4 i'll just specify the index of the element it's done what if you want to print all the array elements the best way would be you can go for for each loop see we have written this right line statement inside this for each loop so each element will get printed here is the output this 5 is from the first print statement these values are coming from this for each loop we have different types of array the simplest one is single dimensional array then the next one is multi-dimensional array and one more type is jagged array Single dimensional array has got only one dimension. Now what we have discussed is a single dimensional array. The next one is multidimensional array and it has got more than one dimensional. We will see how to work with this array. And another type is jagged array. This is array of arrays. That means the array elements are array in itself. We will see how this looks. Look at this statement. This is the single dimensional array. Now we will see how to declare multidimensional array. In case of multidimensional array, dimensions are specified inside the brackets and comma is used to separate the dimensions. Now I'll show you how to create two dimensional array. Write the type, then pair of square brackets. If you write single comma, then it is, co then it is considered as single dimensional array. Then write the array name. Then in the same way, use the new keyword and create the array. This two-dimensional array, named two-dimensional array, has got two rows and three columns. Just for your understanding, this is the array just now we have created. You can assume this array something like this, which has got two rows and three columns. Now I'll show you how to assign the values to this array. This is how we assign the values to this array. This is the same array that we have assigned the values just now. If you want to see the mapping, this is how it looks. Now let's see how to access the elements from this two-dimensional array. Let's try to access this two. Its position is the first row and in that first row, this is the second column. I'll use the same right line statement. Here if you see, we have access two. This is how we access the two-dimensional array. I'll not go deep into three dimensional array, but I'll show you example so that you will get better understanding of how, how to create the multidimensional array. Here is an example. First, we have specified the type. Then inside this square brackets, we have created three dimensions. This means this array contains two rows of two dimensional array. In case of three dimensional array, the first dimension specifies the number of rows and later specify the type of the array. The third category of array is jagged array. In case of jagged array, each element of array itself is an array. We will see how to write that. Here is the example of jagged array. Here jagged array 1 is the name of the array. Here in the declaration, you can see two pair of square brackets. First pair of square brackets specify the type of the jagged array and second pair of square brackets specify the type of the arrays that are elements of the jagged array. In our example, jagged array is a single dimensional and its elements are also single dimensional and array will have three rows of single dimensional array. I have to assign the values, I'll write something like this. Here is another example of jagged array. Just to summarize our today's discussion, arrays are used to store multiple elements of the same size. Type can be any valid type and array is a reference type. Very important thing is, once you create an array, you can't change its dimensions. And elements are accessed using an index which starts from zero. One more thing is, there are three different types of array, single dimensional, multidimensional and jagged array, which we have seen in our example. 
What we have covered in our today's session is the basic understanding of the array. We can do lots and lots of manipulations on the array and upcoming sessions will cover all the manipulations. I hope the session was beneficial. See you soon in the next video. Thank you.